Uh, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, so I'm Kenton, I'm a lead developer advocate at Astronomer. And as Raj said, uh, these sessions, we keep really short, very developer focused on how to implement, you know, some useful airflow feature in your DAGs. Uh, so today I'm super excited to talk about the new SQL table check operator. Um, this was released as part of the common SQL provider, which came out maybe a month or so ago. Our last live with Astronomer uh, was on the SQL column check operator, uh, also part of the same provider package. So if you missed that one and are interested, you can catch the recording. Um, so today we're going to go through uh, this other operator that's part of this package. So without further ado, I'm going to dive right in. So the purpose of the SQL table check operator is to run data quality checks within your DAGs. And as a resource here, I'm going to start with the astronomer registry. I've got pulled up the common SQL provider. You can see we have these two operators as part of it. Um, again, we won't talk about the column check one. We went through that last time. Um, but SQL, SQL table check is going to uh, be best for performing data quality checks that you need to run on your entire table. Um, so they may be aggregated or not, um, but you're looking at not individual values and in columns, but um, metrics over the entire table. So that's what it's for. Pretty straightforward. Um, to use it, I'm going to hop over to a local Airflow instance here and uh, show how you can get started with it. Um, I'm going to be looking at the SQL table checks DAG, um, which is pretty straightforward. So again, keeping this developer focus, we're actually going to look at the code here. Um, so this is my uh, Airflow project that I'm running with the Astro CLI. Uh, the first thing I have to do to be able to use the SQL table check operator is I have to install that common SQL provider. So this is not part of core Airflow, so you do have to install this provider package uh, to have access to it. Um, I've done that by adding it to my requirements.txt file here. And then we'll hop over to the DAG code. So we'll check and see how to implement this. Uh, again, I'm going to import it at the top here. So from my common SQL provider. Uh, the rest of this DAG is just kind of an example. I won't go through it too much. I've got some Snowflake operators that are creating the table that I'm going to run the checks on um, and adding uh data to it all of this stuff is available um through the astronomer registry so we'll make sure to send out the link to that as well afterwards if you want to play around with this particular example uh but i'll scroll down here to where i actually implement this check so this is assuming that i i've created my table i've added some data to it and now i want to run these checks on the entire table um, so I'm going to provide it a connection to my database. In my case, I'm using Snowflake. Um, the uh, common SQL provider is database agnostic, so it should work with um, any database that you're working with. So just provide a connection to that there. And then I'm going to provide a table. Um, so this I've defined up at the top of my DAG here. Um, my table is called Forest Fires. Uh, it's going to be any table you're going to run your checks on. And then you're going to provide uh, your checks as a dictionary. And you can do this in a couple of ways. You can combine them into a single operator. So you can run multiple checks within the same task. Um, you will still be able to distinguish which ones of them passed and failed uh, within the log. So we'll show that later. But, uh, you can, um, if you want to you know, run individual checks with separate tasks, you can do that too. Kind of depends on how you want to control the flow of your DAG. Um, so oftentimes we'll want to you know, pause the DAG, or I should say stop the DAG, um, stop the pipeline if any of the checks failed. So in that case, it can be more convenient to put them all in a single, operate, single task like I have here. So these are just going to be defined as a dictionary. Each check that you provide to this operator should be a SQL statement. Um, so it's going to be a query that you can think of it. You want the result to be, if the result is true, um, then you want the check to pass. If the result is false, uh, you want the check to fail. Um, so the, the actual SQL is going to be, it's going to be converted to a statement for you under the hood. So you can just provide things like, I want my table to have more than five rows. Count stars greater than or equal to five here. Um, you can compare different columns and the aggravated values. So aggregated, not aggravated. <laughs> we hope they're not aggravated. Um, 
So aggregating here, I'm doing saying the sum of this RH column needs to be greater than the sum of this win column. So checks like that. Again, you're just going to provide your SQL statement. You can give the uh, check a name here that you want to show up in the logs. Uh, so super easy. If I hop back to this DAG and go ahead and run it, uh, we should see my checks pass based on the data that I currently have. And this will be straightforward. Mark it as green. Perfect. And then it's going to move on. So in that case, I move on to the rest of my pipeline. Um, don't need to do anything here. If I have a case, say, where my checks are going to fail, so let's change this to 50, which I know I don't have 50 rows in this table, and I'm going to swap that one. So this should be the, this should not be true in the other direction now. And make sure I save this, save that file, go back and trigger this DAG again. And we'll run, and I should see this check fail this time. Here we go, perfect. So task failed because one or more of my checks failed. If I hop into the logs here, uh, I can scroll down and see following tests have failed. Um, so I changed both of them. Obviously my table does not have more than 50 rows and this aggregation is not correct. Um, so those are gonna fail and are gonna allow you to uh, either stop your pipeline if you want that to be the case or really anything that you wanna implement in terms of trigger rules, in terms of how you want your data to flow. If your data quality check fails, you have full flexibility over that. Um, so that's all it takes to implement the operator. Again, super straightforward. Uh, hopping back here again, just to reiterate, um, this operator is useful for any checks that are in, going to include aggregate values over the whole table. So you saw me doing some sums of columns. Um, you could also, yeah, any sort of uh, aggregation over entire columns, check of row counts. You can do things like schema checks for your tables. Um, you can also do comparisons between multiple col columns uh, that are not aggregated. So I didn't show an example of that, but we do have an example um, on the astronomer registry that goes through that. Uh, so if you want to say, you know, column A plus column B is equal to 10, um, you can do something like that where it will do a row-wise comparison. Uh, we recommend in those cases to have a separate task for uh, any non-aggregated comparisons versus aggregated ones. Uh, but otherwise, you have full flexibility on how you want to implement that based on the data quality checks that you need to run on your DAGs. Um, we will have, uh, I'll note before we go to questions, uh, we have some additional resources. These will be sent out to everybody who registered for this session afterwards. Um, like you said, the Astronomer Registry has more information about the Common SQL provider. We also have a written guide um, on implementing data quality checks with both of the operators in that provider that go through that in detail. Um, so that's another great resource for you there. And uh, I'll end with, we were also going to have a webinar in um, a couple of weeks in September uh, where the creators of the Common SQL package, our colleague Benji will uh, walk through all of this in more depth. So if you're interested in diving deeper, definitely make sure you sign up for that. Uh, and with that, for anybody who joined us live, we will take any questions. Awesome, well. I feel like the emphasis on data quality is really driven by folk. But thanks, folks. One more time, the emphasis on data quality is really driven by what folks are asking us. So if that's something you're thinking about in your pipelines, um, please talk to us about that. Um, there are a couple of questions here, Kenton. Um, to start off, we'll use Snowflake for this example. But do the common SQL providers work for any other databases? Yes, absolutely. Um, so it's database agnostic. So if you're using a Postgres or BigQuery or Redshift, anything anything like that, um, doesn't change how you implement the operator. Uh, you would just provide a different con a connection to your database. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, so it's not only for stuff like you can use That's it for correct. just about everything. Um, so question from Ethan, who I don't know if the chat's working for him. So sorry about that, Ethan. But Ethan's asking, can the chat serve as a branch operator? Like, can you trigger a Slack operator if this operator, if this particular operator fails or not? 
That's a great question. So this, uh, the table check operator is not a branch operator in itself, but it does function just like any other operator within Airflow. So if you want to, you know, trigger um, like a Slack message or something like that uh, based on the failure, uh, I would recommend using like a custom callback for that. Um, you can also, again, in defining your trigger rules, sort of you can branch downstream and then within those downstream tasks, sort of say, I want to run only if the upstream fails versus only if the upstream succeeds. So that's another way of implementing that, you know, depending on what you're getting at. I, th I think that, um, yeah, the way I've seen it done is to use those trigger rules. And even if an example of that would be helpful, please feel free to shoot us a note and we'll more than, more than happily whip up a register example for you there. Cool. Um, next question is from Victor. Um, under the hood, does the operator run the aggregation on the database that you're running on or does it do it in local memory? That's a great question. I, Raj, keep me honest. I believe it yeah. does it in local memory. <laughs> Yeah, I think it depends on where you're doing it, right? So in this example, the Snowflake query actually ran down on Snowflake itself. Um, so it depends on kind of the downstream system you're using. Um, there isn't going to, Victor, I'm just reading the rest of your question. Uh, it's not designed to really reduce cost. So if cost conservation is something that you have top of mind, um, reach out to us. You know, I'm sure there's a pattern we can implement that would help with that. Um, but yeah, it's just meant to more make sure your data is of a certain integrity rather than for something around cost reduction. Um, another question from Mike, and I'm going to take this one as well, Kenton, is does the query, does the query the table for each individual, sorry, is it one query per check or is it one giant query with every check in it? Um, the way we've written this right now is it's one query per check, but all the queries aren't a single task because I want my DAG to fail if any of my checks don't pass. And Mike, we can send you over the source code for it so you can take a deeper look at how it works. Um, another question from Ethan Kenton is, why is it best to keep the non-aggregate checks separate than the aggregate checks? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, mostly because of how the operator is sort of aggregating those results under the hood and how it's determining kind of success or failure. So uh, it's just a little more straightforward there. And the guide um, link to, or if you want to look at the source code, you can has a little more information on this, but essentially successes are getting turned into, you know, ones, and then it's doing a count of aggregating all of those. So it's just a little more efficient to split them out that way. It's also a little more readable um, from a user standpoint just to um in sort of how they're separated there but yeah i would agree i think the best practice piece makes it a lot easier to maintain as well this one this one all right um question from uh gjesh is can you add a where clause in the check or is it meant to be well it's almost like this last one is it an aggregate or is it a condition uh yeah, I'm trying to think of an example of a query that would have a where clause in it. Um, I mean, in general, you can, you're just providing a SQL statement that, you know, should return a true or false. So in general, like, yes, any SQL statement that you provide that should return either a yes, yes or no um, kind of answer should should be fine. Um, so I think there's no reason you couldn't add like a where clause to like this count star if you didn't want to count like the entire tables account where some column is equal to whatever is greater than mm -hmm. or equal to, you could definitely do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it really depends on what you're trying to check for. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for the question. All right, we've got one more and I'll take this one. Schema checks, How's it, how does it work? Do I need to run queries against metadata OS or is there an example here? We can definitely try to whip up an example of doing something like a schema check. This particular operator wasn't exactly meant to check schemas. Um, 
it's really more meant to say like, hey, before I feed this number to my dashboard, do, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it within some scope? Um, it's not really a schema check sort of thing, Miranda. It's much more, Amendra, it's much more around value checking and making it so that you're making sure that your data fits some sort of business requirement and feels sane from that perspective. Yeah, I think I'll add, we list schema checks in the docs as something that you can do with it, which is is correct. And you certainly could point it at a table in the metadata and, and check for that. But I think when we wrote schema, it was not not so much like this is the schema of my table, but sort of this is how the data is. is mm, yeah. That um, not that you couldn't do what you're describing, but. Good clarification. Awesome. Tons of questions. So really appreciate all the conversation. Um, yeah. Like we said, all of the content will be sent over to you afterwards, and this video will be available for you to send to other folks as well. Um, so until next time, thank you all so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye.